In this set of videos, we take a look at a series of topics relating to the Unit 3 programming project. These videos have been designed to be dual purpose. Students will benefit by gaining an understanding of how best to approach their project and how the MART scheme will be applied against their write-up. And teachers looking to gain some more confidence in this unit will also get information on how to guide their students and mark the project. In this video, we carefully look at OCR's best fit marking guidance and how to apply this to a project. Many teachers make the mistake when marking a project for the first time of penalising students for omissions. However, this is a mistake. Marking should always be positive in nature. You're looking to reward students' achievements wherever possible, not penalise failure or omissions. Teachers should apply the principles of best fit assessment and at all times the awarding of a mark must directly relate to the marking criteria and nothing else. Each band descriptor presented covers all the relevant criteria for a particular section such as analysis design development testing and evaluation. The descriptors for any section should be read and applied as a whole. It's very important to realise that a student's write-up does not have to meet all the requirements of a band descriptor before being awarded a mark in that band. The wording that you see in a particular band descriptor describes the type of evidence you'd want to see for the very top mark in that band. For a mark band of 9 to 12, the wording of the descriptors therefore describes the quality needed for the mark of 12, not the mark of 9. You would place a piece of work into a particular mark band when it meets more of the requirements of that band than it meets the requirements of other bands. The first thing to do is look at a section of the write-up and decide which band descriptor most closely matches the quality of the work being marked. Once you've done this, you now need to decide on one of the marks available within that band. Start by deciding to what extent the statements within the band have been achieved. And bear in mind the following advice. If the work convincingly meets all the statements of a band descriptor, the highest mark from that band should be awarded. If the work convincingly meets nearly all the statements, a mark should be placed at or near the top of that band. If the work adequately meets the statements, the most appropriate mark would now be somewhere in the middle range of the band. If the work just meets the statements, the lowest mark should be awarded. If you find the work is on the borderline between two bands, but it is decided that it fits better the descriptors for the lower of the two bands, then it should be placed near the top of that lower band. You must always make sure to use the full range of marks available and don't be afraid to award full marks in any band if it clearly does meet all the descriptors of that band. One last thing to note on marking is the holistic nature of a computing project. It is most likely the students have tackled the problem in an agile and iterative way. Sure, they will probably have done most of the analysis right up at the start of the project, followed by some design. But after this, they will have evidence for development, testing and ongoing evaluation throughout. If a student hit a problem and revisited the user in an interview, they may well have changed their project midway through, adding in new requirements which come to light, removing old ones, creating a new screen design, producing a new algorithm. This is all totally normal and should be encouraged. Due to this, the project should be assessed holistically. Now, of course, the mark grid is presented and organised into discrete sections, but it's very unlikely students' evidence will be presented in order under these neat headings. And in fact, you should really avoid forcing students to do this. It will make for a very unnatural project write-up. Evidence to support the assessment may well be found throughout the project report. 
It is therefore the job of the teacher to flag this up. Now, it isn't required, but it's often helpful if you provide some additional commentary to the moderator on how you've applied your marks, especially, for example, if substantial evidence for your mark in the analysis section is actually to be found much later in the project write up. Are you looking for more help or guidance with the project, either as a student not sure what to do or even as a teacher if you're delivering the project for the first time? Well, with a Craig and Dave premium membership, you'll get access to all the following resources. We provide you with three exemplar projects, two graded at an A and one at an A star. These are projects that we've submitted by our candidates before and got permission to release. These have been moderated and approved by an exam board and the marks have not been adjusted. So you can be sure these are of high quality and match the mark scheme. Along with these projects, we provide you the marking grid we used, highlighting how we applied the marking and the criteria against each of the example of projects. We also provide you with additional commentary stating to the examiner how we applied the mark and how we found the evidence in the projects and applied it against the mark scheme. We also have a detailed project guidebook which steps through each section of the project from initial ideas to analysis, design, development, coding and evaluation. This book is aimed at the students, making sure that they can achieve the top mark band and an A star from their project. Examiner tips are provided throughout and examples of best practice. It's a complete guide on how to document and write their projects. This guide is available on Amazon as a separate purchase, but with a Craig and Dave membership, a PDF copy is provided for free to the school. We also have a second version of this book designed at students who wish to do projects that aren't related to games development. And again, this is included at no extra cost. Just so you can be secure that the quality of information you're getting is high, here's some of our past moderator feedback. The marks were considered in line with the national standard, full credit to the Centre of Professional Performance with the first attempt at a new specification and the centre have appreciated the requirements and are able to apply them realistically. Dave and I have been submitting multiple projects every single year for students of different abilities since the first year of the specification, and our marks have not once been adjusted by the exam board.